what's up guys welcome back once again it is me Molt. super happy to be with you guys today so here's what's going on in this video y'all saw from the title i'm going to give you guys some tips on how to go late game all right so right now i'm playing with a fan uh i'm not sure exactly what his name was but we were tweeting uh, i tweeted out i was like guys i'm trying to go late game uh, i tried to record this a whole bunch of times but i kept running into people that either couldn't go late game or they um would just not build uh, the right towers and i just kept winning without even rushing them so it's a little bit frustrating so i'm playing with a fan today uh for the sole purpose of showing you guys how i go late game so there's a couple of things that are necessary when it comes to going late game and one of the main ones that i would say is super super important to go late game has to be bc or balloon control okay so as you get later on in the games it's very very important and crucial that you can control the balloons all right so the balloons are going to come out at the at their standard normal pace that the game sets them up to okay so no matter what color uh, the balloon is, whether it's a, a BFB, a Moab, a ZOMG, whatever it may be, they all have their speed that they come out at. Um, we all know that. So pinks come out really fast, yellows come out really fast, so on and so forth. And the ability to control these is very, very important. Okay, so we're going to get into that too a little bit. But probably the most important thing besides that when it comes to going late game is... Uh, your eco. All right, so right now me and this guy are just spamming eco and it's really important to do early on as I always tell you guys uh, at the latest I want to have a thousand eco by round 24 if possible. Now if the other person's rushing uh, and so on and just doing that kind of stuff then sometimes it's hard because you have to build more towers in order to defend so you're not able to spend that money on eco. So right here uh, you can see that we've got the sub, uh, and the sub holds off on its own very, very well. The sub does a great job of holding off, especially once you get the airburst darts or the O2 sub. Obviously, you can go 2-2 two -two sub, uh, which is what I have right now. The airburst darts are super, super clutch in uh, allowing you to farm eco and not really worry about any balloons getting by. So if there's water, always use a sub. Subs are one of my favorite towers in the game, and they hold off really, really well early game. They don't help out too much late game. They do help a little bit. They also help with shooting leads and things like that. If you put them on strong and you have a ballistic missile on it uh, or O3, as long as you have that, then you can take out the leads and ceramics and things like that. But subs are very, very important if there's water. All right, so... Um, you need a you need good towers that have good balloon popping control and you also need good towers that have BC or um, balloon control so right here what we've got to do uh, the BC on this map is we've got the ninja and if you get an O uh, O3 and O4 sub <laughs> sub uh, ninja that's gonna help out a lot okay so the O3 ninja or the 2 three ninja whatever you want to say uh, because eventually you will build it to two three and then two four. Um, the 2-3 Ninja has Flash Bomb, alright? So that helps controlling uh, balloons. So it doesn't help with any Moab class balloon like BFBs or Moabs or ZOMGs, anything like that. So once you get that 2-3 Ninja, you're good for a while. You're good until you start seeing Moabs at around, what is that? I think it's around 26, 27 when they actually come out by the game. So once you get to that point, you want to have your 2-4 Ninja, alright? Now obviously we're not to that point yet, but we're getting get there in a little bit i'm just kind of going into details now as y'all watch what's going on so two four ninjas have sabotage supply line which slows down all balloons that come out after the fact um, for a allotted period of time so sabotage supply lines is super super clutch you can see it right there so i've got my two three ninja right now i think it's two three and we're gonna get to two four as soon as possible but remember you want to upgrade but so that you have enough to defend but you also want to continue sending eco so right now round 15 i'm at 523 eco very very, very important to send pinks guys okay pinks are the most efficient balloons for eco they come out super super fast and they give you a good amount if you're sending blacks or whites things like that they don't come out as fast so once you get enough money to just spam you want to be spamming pinks because they're going to give you the most money in the fastest or quickest amount of time all right so right now you can see we've got two subs. This guy's got two subs. He's got one already submerged, which is good. So he's got that four two sub um, on his side, which is holding off really well. Uh, once you get later on in the game, if you have enough money, don't go with the with the four two sub. Just go with the four zero oh sub, so that you don't spend money on those darts. Because when it's submerged, it's not going to be shooting. It's just going to be popping those balloons. So um, also. 
it's very, very important to be very precise with where you place your towers. So in this middle section, you can actually fit five subs. Um, the guy on the right, as you can see, there's a little gap of blue right to the left of his sub. There's no gap of blue to the left of mine. And because of that gap, he's only going to be able to fit four subs in there. And it's clutch to be able to have um, five of them. So right now, you can see we've got some lead coming in. He doesn't have any lead popping power at this point, um, except for that sub right there that is submerged. Um, I've got the, uh, the flash bomb ninja, and you can see that that balloon control right there is helping a lot. You can see the balloons are getting a lot further on his side. So it's very important. It is very important to get that as soon as you can. Uh, when it comes to late game. So now, you might be asking, well, Molt, do I always have to use the Ninja? No, you can use a 4-0 cannon because Balloon Impact is clutch. Balloon Impact is so good, but Balloon Impact can't see camo, and it also is $4,000. Um, the Flash Bomb, I believe, is $27,500, I think is what it is. Um, so you have to pay attention to price as well as functionality. Now, the actual stun of the 4-0 cannon is better than the flash bomb. It's just a little bit more expensive. So right now he goes, and I believe his bonus is the tack shooter, which is okay. But personally, for late game, you don't want uh, something like a tack shooter, in my opinion. Now, the blade storm is pretty epic, and it does a lot of damage. You'll see that it holds off here. But overall, um, it's not as good. Uh, as building uh, the other towers that I have. So right now I've got the Ninja, I've got the uh, Super Monkey, which isn't built yet. I've also got the Sniper. Now some of y'all might be like, Molt, seriously, a freaking Sniper? What is that? We're around 22, I've got a thousand eco right now. But um, we're gonna go back to the concept of balloon control, okay? But in regards to the Sniper, um, it if you get a 4-2 Sniper, it is so clutch late game because it really slows down the Moabs, it slows down BFBs, it slows down ZOMGs, it slows down everything that comes at you in regards to the blimps or the bigger balloons. So if you're planning on going late game and you can get a sniper as a bonus, I wouldn't get it as your main tower. You can if you want to, but I don't think that it's nearly as important um, because you don't want to risk getting something like, a, a, I, I don't know, something else like a, an ice tower as your uh, bonus. So I was lucky enough to get the sniper as my bonus in this one, which was clutch. There you go. You can see that I've got five subs in there. He's only got four. So that's a lot more um, sub power that I can fit. I've got two submerged. I've got three above water and they're holding off really, really well right now. We're around 23. No problems whatsoever. We're going to continue. We're going to continue sending eco. Now, when it comes to sending eco, yes, you could have farms, but honestly, I would rather have eco um, and more towers that have good balloon control than having a farm. If you want to have a farm, that's perfectly fine because you can get balloon control from only one tower. But this sniper you'll see is one of the key things that helps me last. Um, that helps me last in this game. So. Um, as I was saying, you can have farms if you want to, but getting that eco at the bottom, right now I'm at 1200, uh, is super, super clutch. It really, really helps out. You don't have to click on bananas. You don't have to pay attention to anything. It just comes. And that's my favorite part about eco or about balloon eco over farming eco is the fact that I don't have to do anything, uh, once it's there. So right now I'm not spamming any balloons or anything like that. And I'm getting 1200 every six seconds. That's clutch for me. That's really, really clutch because I get annoyed having to collect bananas and things like that but maybe that's just me and I know that you have to tap to send balloons but still it's a little bit easier than having to collect uh, bananas so uh, we're holding off really well right now we're gonna build up a balloon jitsu ninja up at the top um, you can see that our opponent finally has a uh, there goes this blade storm right there it's pretty cool it looks pretty sweet it doesn't last that long though um, but you can see that he has the um, sabotage supply line ninja as well uh, very very key now here's the thing you don't want just one uh, you don't want just one balloon control uh, tower so I'm gonna actually end up building um, I generally try and get four to six sabotage supply line um, uh, ninjas not only because it helps stun the balloons that are beneath the moabs and be beneath the blimps but it also helps it so that um, in later rounds as your sabotage supply line wears off you have another one waiting for you so very very important to do that now guys this is just my personal tactic for going late game you can do it a countless number of ways you can have 
uh, boomerang monkeys, you can have wizards. Some people like having all of those phoenixes just flying around the screen. But personally, this is my favorite. I love ninjas, I love subs, and I love super monkeys for late game. Super monkeys, in my opinion, are one of the best late game towers. Also, wood chippers, if you, or balloon chippers. If you can get balloon chippers, those are super clutch too for late game because they suck up the moabs and they crush. But as you can see right now, I've got two sabotage supply line ninjas. Uh, he only has one. We haven't had to use it yet because we've got our four subs in there just doing some serious work. The fact that we have three that are above water and he only has two is helping us out a lot because they're doing, they're focused on strong and they're doing a really, really good job of shooting down uh, the Moab. So as you go along in the game, you want your higher damage towers to be focused on strong because you need to do as much damage to the Moabs and BFBs as you can before anything else comes out. So I've got my, you can see that, I've got my super monkey on strong, I've got my subs on strong, I've got my balloon jitsu monkeys on strong, and eventually, uh, as you start building lower down in the map towards the bottom, you're going to make sure that you have some of those on first, because otherwise they're going to be turned around, focus on the moabs, and they're going to be missing the balloons that are going by them that are the things that end up killing you. They're the things that end up taking your lives, and you don't want that to happen. So... We're gonna go ahead, build another Sabotage Supply Line Ninja. I'm weird, I like putting them next to each other and I like being super symmetrical. So you can see right there, we've got two Sabotage Supply Lines on the bottom. I'm gonna build a lot of Balloon Jitsu Monkeys on the top. We've got 1500 Eco right now, killing it. That's so much Eco, it's just coming in, flowing. And as you go later and later in the game, uh, and you have enough defense, then you can go ahead and spam it. Now, one thing you'll notice is a lot of times, uh, you'll go from getting a whole bunch of balloons on your screen to nothing. In those moments where you're getting nothing, that's when you want to be sending your eco because your defense is good, it's holding off well, you want to use that time to build up your eco. Um, very, very important to realize that and try and figure out when those rounds come. So, like right now, look at that. Just regular balloons, they're barely even getting past the entrance, so I want to be, uh, I want to be sending eco unless I'm waiting to upgrade something. So, right now, uh, we're holding off really well. We've got our uh, super monkey doing work. I'm definitely waiting to upgrade him again uh, because he is beast as you upgrade him. You can see our opponent has, a, so there we go, we're gonna upgrade him right there. You can see our opponent has a couple, like a flamethrower, a blade storm, all that kind of stuff. And those work really well against those balloons as they're coming through, but they don't do that much uh, damage to the Moabs and BFBs as you'll see right here. So there we go, we're gonna use one of our sabotage supply lines. You can see how the balloons are going a lot slower. I can't wait for you guys to see what the ninja, or what's, what the sniper does once he's upgraded. So we've got these BFBs coming in. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more balloon jitsu monkeys up there because I want a lot of balloon popping power. It's super important to have some balloon popping power. Now you have to, you'll learn through experience what balloons work better at popping moabs and things of that sort. Wizards don't do that well at popping Moabs. They do a good job of balloon control, uh, especially when you have a tornado. But when you go uh, with a 2-4 uh, wizard, they do good against the balloons, but they don't do that much damage against the Moab. So as you go along and as you play, you'll learn what does better. So there we go. We maxed out our sniper. You can see that. And look, it's stopping that Moab in its tracks. That Moab just completely stopped. It shoots those. Um, and once you get late game, that is so key. And I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot how good these snipers were. I'm going to build another one and go with that 4-2 sniper once again. Because like I said, it is super clutch. You're going to see it in a little bit once we start getting a lot of Moabs and BFBs coming out, how clutch it really is. So right now we've got all of our subs with advanced intel and they're focused on strong and they're doing work. You can see both of us are still building our eco. I'm almost up to 2,000. You can see my monkeys, my ninjas up in the top right, shooting up into the top right corner, which is where the opponent's balloons come from. So we're doing a really, really good job, both of us, of building our eco. You can see I'm spamming right there, over 2,000 eco, just taking advantage of these slow rounds. You can see there's not that much coming out, so that's when you gotta spam it. That's when you gotta do it. Um, we're gonna upgrade that. Uh, sniper one more time and look at the look at the Moabs guys they're stopping in their tracks because of the sniper you'll see some of them get passed up it's really really funny they just freeze they freeze in their place and that's only with one sniper focus on strong right now you can see them right there they pause they stop so epic um, so once we get that other one up it's gonna be super clutch we're gonna go ahead and use another sabotage supply line right here you can see watch some of the Moabs they just stop and stand completely still and certain ones will pass the other ones we're taking them out really really easily um, some of my favorite towers for 
uh, doing for uh, balloon control and whatnot are the balloon jitsu ninjas. I think that they absolutely crush. They do a lot of damage. You can see right there, look at that. That BFB is stuck. Look at that. They're stuck in the top corner, and that's all because of the sniper set to strong doing work. I'm saving up for that 7,000 to go ahead and upgrade this other one so that he can hold off. We've got two, four, two snipers, and they are rushing it right now they're absolutely crushing look that bfb is barely even coming on the screen right now because it's just frozen in place look at it it's just completely frozen they just keep on stopping in their tracks we have nothing to worry about you can see how much further they're going along on on his screen so paying attention to balloon control guys especially in late game is super super important you can see how much further the balloons are going on his side so he has two bfbs up now he only has one i don't have any bfbs up we're holding him off really really he's gonna use that blade storm right there and our uh, Moabs aren't even getting past this first section because of those snipers and because of that sabotage supply line. You can see it again. He still has that original BFB. We don't have any of them. And that's because they're freezing in their place and the Bloon Jitsu Ninjas are crushing them. They're absolutely owning them. Right now, we've only got a couple things. Again, you can see them up there in the top of the screen just freezing. They're taking their time. They're getting shot by the snipers, which is so sick and so awesome. The Bloons are getting pretty far on his side. And uh, it's because, it's honestly because he didn't have as many, um, first of all, his eco isn't as high as mine. He also didn't have as many uh, sabotage supply line ninjas as, as I did. And also, my snipers are helping out a lot with freezing all those balloons in place. He's got five, is that five BFBs or six? One, two, three, it's five BFBs on his screen. We have absolutely nothing left. Look at that. Boom. All gone. So we've got our super monkeys, which are super key for late game, especially when you get uh, the robots and you go with the sun god. There he goes. Takes it out. But watch this, guys. It appeared that there was a little bit of lag, and he ends up losing right there. So those balloons actually did get by. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned a lot. Remember, guys, balloon control is key for victory. I'll see you guys in the next episode. As always, make sure you keep calm and you pop on. See you guys.